friends, my name is Leisha and I am so excited you're here. Today's project is a really fun one and near and dear to my heart. I have been thrifting and DIYing my own Halloween costumes my entire life. In fact, when I was in hair school, we had a project runway show and the theme was Hollywood characters. I decided to do Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland and at the time Clint and I were dating. I asked Clint if he would be my model and he happily obliged. We, we spent the next few weeks thrifting and DIYing and making an amazing costume. It turned out so good. I might just have to insert a picture here or there for you to see. It was super duper fun. Today's project is a fun one because if you've never done anything like this before, this is a great tutorial to start. It gives you the tips and tricks that you need to apply what you're learning today to any costume that you want. The trick is go thrifting. Find foundational pieces that, can, that you can embellish and snip and tailor and cut to make an incredible costume. The payoff for this is super great, especially if you have a costume contest party to go to. Let's jump right in and I'll show you what I did. First things first, head to the thrift store and find your foundational pieces. If you are not a seamstress like I am not a seamstress, these foundational pieces are key. I have no idea how people make clothes from scratch with armholes and perfect sleeves and it's pretty much witchcraft. I'm still trying to learn how to sew in a straight line. So find your foundational pieces and then you can tailor and change, add on and tweak as necessary. You can see I found this cute little brown corduroy dress. It was perfect because it was sleeveless. It was only $3.49 and the perfect color. I ended up getting that cute little blue shirt. It has not a cute design on it, but it doesn't matter. You won't see it anyways. And it was only $2.49. These were tea towels that I got. A whole bunch of white ones I thought I could use for the apron and things. They were only $2.99. Now, the first thing I needed to do on that brown dress is remove all of those buttons because that wasn't quite the aesthetic we were going for. Penny Rose loved getting a little baggy and collecting all of those buttons and playing with them. You'll see later on that she and Owen sat by me at the table and made little dresses for their Lego people and action figures. After I removed the buttons, I put the dress on Penny Rose and I saw that the neckline, you could see the blue shirt un under the brown dress and I didn't like that. So I pinned it together using these amazing little sewing clips. I do not have the patience for pins. These clips are amazing. I love them. So pinned it together and then there's already a little um, seam on the neckline of the brown dress. So I just went right along that seam to kind of hide my stitching and sewed that blue shirt right onto the brown dress so that you couldn't see it underneath. Penny, come try this on. Penny Rose tried it on. It was looking so cute. Perfect colors, perfect shape. But then when she turned around, you could see, oh no, you can see the blue shirt under the brown dress again. So I decided I should probably do the back too. Now you can see that there's a zipper and luckily she didn't need to unzip the dress to put it on. So I just went from the zipper to the arm on each side and I did not sew across the zipper at all. Just left that kind of open and blink. There's Owen in the back making his little dress for Owlet. And there it is on her again, making sure it all fits good. You can see that you can't see the blue um, shirt under there anymore. It looks seamless. There's the before and the after. It made such a difference sewing it together. It make, looks so, so nice. Next, we needed to bring out those white tea towels and hold them up to Penny Rose to see how wide we wanted our apron to be, how long do we want it to be. I liked seeing the brown dress on the bottom of the apron a little bit. And then I looked up pictures to see how far around her body it should go. I just looked up the 
those little pictures of Cinderella. Here I am filling the bobbin. It is simultaneously the most satisfying and least satisfying activity when you're right in the middle of a project. The last thing you want to do is fill up a bobbin. After measuring on Penny Rose where we wanted that apron to fall, I measured how long that was and marked that all the way across so I could get a nice clean straight line. After cutting it out, I cut it in half and then hemmed that one edge. That's the really nice thing about using these towels is almost all the edges are already hemmed for you. If you can hear my baby, she's here with me. I'm holding her as I do this voiceover. So she's playing with me for a minute while we do this. Are you saying hi, Martha? Here I am hemming that edge. And then you'll see later on that I actually grabbed some felt and put it underneath the top of the apron because I really wanted a nice, sturdy, looking apron. I wanted the top to be a nice, clean, straight, heavy line. Here I am sewing that felt right onto the apron. And you can see I am still learning how to sew in a straight line. <laughs> Okay, next I got a gray piece of felt. It doesn't matter the color. I wish I had white, but I didn't. So I ended up using this light gray. I folded it in half, cut it, and then sewed the small edges together. I needed a longer piece of gray felt. I'm using this felt as interfacing for the big bow that goes on the back of the costume. I don't have interfacing, and this is what I had, so this is what I used. Um, and then I cut it to be the size of the bow that I want. And you can see I was kind of measuring it out there, folding it. And then I just put these tea towels over it and sewed it up on each edge where the pins are. I did the other side too. And it doesn't matter that the white is not touching in the middle, you will not see that at all. After I was done doing the sides, then you, just like we did with the great felt, sew the short edges together. I did it right sides touching, and then we'll cut off the excess. <laughs> You're cute, Martha, are you making noises? And I wanted it to be really sturdy and really strong, so I did quite a bit of back stitching on there to give us some durability and strength. Who knows if that's what you're supposed to do, but that's what I did. Here I am, we made a little tube, and now I'm folding it to make sure it's working, it's the right size. Now that seam, we want right in the middle because we want our bow to be very even and precise. So I'm just measuring, making sure that seam is exactly in the center. To fold the bow, you fold the very center of it in half, and then you fold the edges down towards the table. This part's really important because this will give you your shape of your bow. However, however you want your bow to look, this is what it's this is the step that gives it that look. So then I just got some thread and wrapped it around to hold that in the middle. Then I got the dress and put it on the dress to make sure it was the right size and make sure that it was looking the way I wanted it to look. Then I just made a little tube out of the white tea towel to go around the center of the bow. And then I just grabbed some scraps to kind of see how long do I want these tails to be. What do you see? What do you see, Martha Elizabeth? I love you. What else? Okay, so here I am making another tube for the tails of the bow. You just sew across the, bow, the sew across the long edge and then flip it in half, or sorry, flip it inside out, and then fold it in half and put it underneath the middle of the bow. And there's your little, pretty little tube with no raw edges. I wanted mine to be cut on the angle on the end. 
Then I flipped it over to get the same angle on the other side. You can see that I'm cutting it a lot longer and that's because I had this crazy idea to put some wire in that little tail, hook up some birds, and make it look like the birds were actually tying Penny Rose's apron and flying back behind her. I picked up these birds at the dollar store and they were not flying. I looked at Joann's and Michael's and other places and I couldn't find flying birds. So I ended up taking off the wings, buying some feathers and re-gluing it on to make it look like the birds were flying. This pack of feathers was the most disgusting pack. I showed you that there was like all of the skin in there. There was an entire wing in there. I was wishing there were two wings so I could use it, but it was great. It was like it, they didn't clean it and sift it well enough. So much bird skin and wings and bones. It was disgusting. So here I am. I have my birds finally completed. I have my little tails done. I have my tube to go over the top all sewn and ready to go. We're making sure everything looks good together. We sewed the edges. Then I just hot glued that tube in the center and you'll see that I left, sorry, she's touching the microphone. <laughs> I left the tails long on the back on purpose. That's how I'm going to attach it to the other part of their apron and just tie it on. So when I flip it over here on the back, you'll see those tails, I don't cut them off. I keep them long so that I can tie it onto the apron. Next, I stole Clinty's fly swatter. <laughs> I was doing this at like midnight, one in the morning. Everyone was asleep. Clint was asleep on the couch because he wanted to be by me. He didn't want to go up to bed. And I didn't want to, no, no stores were open to go buy wire, so I grabbed Clinty's fly swatter and disassembled it and put the birds on it. After attaching everything together, seeing the birds on it, seeing it on Penny Rose, it looked so bad, my friends. You have no idea. It looked, the wire was too heavy. I couldn't hook it on quite right. The birds were just like dragging behind her. And so after all of that <laughs> burning the midnight oil work, I ended up tearing it all apart and just doing a normal little apron in the back. I should have taken some pictures so you could see what it looked like. I was too embarrassed. I wasn't even going to put this bird footage in here, but I thought it was a good opportunity to talk about failing. As DIYers, we fail, or at least I fail a lot. And there are times when I work on a project for hours and hours and hours, and it just doesn't turn out, and I have to pull it all apart and scrap it. And just like in life, we can fail, but all we need to do is pull it all apart and try again. Thanks to a loving Savior, Jesus Christ has shown us mercy and taught us that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to try again. And that's what I decided to do here. Instead of doing birds, I decided to make a needle felted mouse. I was recording myself, but I've never made a needle felted mouse before or a needle felted anything for that matter. So I decided to stop recording myself because I didn't have anything to teach or share. But now I can teach you some things that I learned along the way. If you'd like a video like that, let me know in the comments down below. This is how the entire costume turned out. I think it looks so cute. I loved Penny's happy little smile as she was wearing it. She was so pleased to be putting it on and feeling like a princess. I love the pop of color that the mouse gives on her little shoulder and the cute little prop that it brings. It lets you know for sure that she is Cinderella. I loved the big bow in the back that's all lined and sturdy and stands up by itself. Penny Rose was so happy with it and so was I.
you liked today's video, please let me know. I would love a like and let me know in the comments down below. I want to know what I should be making more of, what you want to see. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you in the next one. Bye my friends.